going. Hey, howdy and a big welcome back to Clem Hawks, folks. I'm Yak alongside Gillis TV, ready to take you home for this Blue Jays game review following a 4-3 victory over top of the Los Angeles Angels on a good Friday. Not just because it's good Friday, it's a victory for the Blue Jays. They get up to win number five of the season, improved to five and three on the year, and help out their standing within the AL East a little bit more on this Friday evening. He's Gillis TV, as I mentioned. I'm Yak as we get underway tonight. I want to mention to you, if you're new to the channel right now, if you have a chance at any point during the video, hit that subscribe button here on Clem Hawks. We'd love to have you for more Blue Jays, Twins, and MLB discussion throughout the season. But with that, we turn it over to Gillis TV, who will get us recapped for what we need to know in terms of the early part of this game and how this did not look like it was going to be a 4-3 final for the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, it was the same start for Chris Bassett when he played against the Cardinals, giving up an early home run to Mike Trout with Taylor Ward on base to lead the game off, which started 2 nothing. And, you know, it took a bit for the Blue Jays' bats to come around when Espinel grounded into a fielder's choice to second baseman Brandon Drury to shortstop Fletcher. Guerrero did score on that play, and Chapman did get to go to third. Uh, then, of course, Fletcher safe at first after a weird play we thought was a guaranteed out, but it wasn't, and a runner scored from third on that play. And then in the seventh inning, Bo Bichette with two guys on made Sanderval work for his stuff. I believe it was Sanderval at that point. Nope, that was when, look. sorry, they turned over to... Um... Oh, uh, yeah. Pitcher beforehand. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Herget. Herget. Yeah, Herget. So Herget came in, two guys on, and Bichette fought off a couple great pitches by Herget and ultimately went to the same spot where Trout did for his home run. And that was the game. And, you know, the pitching by Chris Bassett at the start, we didn't think he was going six innings, but he did. And he pitched, I think the final was 107 pitches. For him, and he really dialed in after, I would say, about the fourth inning. His curveball control got into play really well, and from then, the Blue Jays bullpen that has been the talking point ever since the off season. Yemi Garcia inning pitched with a strikeout. Eric Swanson gave up a double, leadoff double. Tawny finished the inning with a strikeout and a couple flyouts, and of course, Jordan Romano. Six pitches in the bottom of the ninth coming in with the save. So all in all, pitching was really good for the Blue Jays. And Bichette with the three-run home run to win the game. Well, this one started off awkwardly too. There was an argument after the Blue Jays had been sat down in the top half of the first between the umpire and Chris Bichette, who they kind of went back and forth about the uh, pitch calm system. Bassett was uh, kind of dinged with a ball against to begin the ball game before he even threw a pitch because of a violation. He was arguing that he had to get the pitch calm working before he could throw, and that was kind of an issue that we saw pop up a couple more times. I believe there were two more pitch clock violations the rest of the way home in this ball game. So just for my first Blue Jays game of the season, watching all nine innings all in a row, calling them here on Clem Hawks and giving you my take on the pitch clock situation. It's something that at this point, even when it happens, it's so minor, it's so minuscule within the grand scheme of the game and within the grand scheme of the situation it happens in that it was really interesting to see how uh, no pitcher got rattled from it. Obviously, the start to it, Chris Bassett was a little upset, but it is what it is when you're testing something completely brand new to the MLB, and uh, that's kind of where it was really interesting to see uh, both teams battle through it. Sandoval had some violations too, so it's not like it wasn't something that uh, popped up for both teams, and really glad that that realistically did not factor into anything that happened in this ball game. Does that ball against Bassett kind of factor into maybe the Trout two-run home run, sure. But again, at the end of the day, it's erased by the three-run shot for Bo Bichette, ending it 4-3. I guess to think about the pitching tonight, 
Just a thought further on the lockdown three innings we saw from the Blue Jays bullpen, beginning with Garcia, going to Swanson, and then to Romano. I know he touched on the game notes there, but just to give you an idea of how that one shook out there for the Blue Jays in terms of those guys lining up. Well, first and foremost, I was kind of surprised because Zach Pop was warmed up. And with Chris Bassett coming in and the game was then they were still down 3-1 when – or no, they were up 4-3 when Garcia came out. The pitching by those pitchers, and I said this in the pregame, was the Jays' bullpen technically has five, six guys who could play in these sorts of games where you could throw one of them in in the seventh up by one run, one in the eighth, one in the ninth. It's not going to be the same three every time. Yes, maybe it will be Jordan Romano, 90% of the time saving the game but when you have a bullpen like that and the pitching they got today from those three guys where Romano six pitches he, if we have a close game again tomorrow night Romano's closing that one out too yep. Eric Swanson I think had 11 pitches and Garcia had 16 I believe so they were doing really good there and that's been the vocal point of of this Blue Jays season is how good that bullpen is and we've seen why today and in the pregame we said a close game was going to happen to show the identity of this Blue Jays team if they were to come back and win and they did just that. Well and so the final line on Chris Bissett tonight was six innings pitch, two hits, three runs, two earned, five walks. That was the dangerous part. Bissett walked himself into danger a couple of times throughout that six innings and that's obviously what also led to the pitch count being as high as it was but he was able to also strike out five batters today lower his era to start the season through two starts from the egregious 24.0 or whatever the heck it was close to to start now down to 10.61 with just two earned today so obviously a couple more starts and you'll see it get towards that 3.8 3.9 range and everything will be hunky dory for him patrick sandoval's final line tonight six hits on six innings pitched one earned run one walk and two strikeouts lowering his era to start the year from a buck 80 down to a buck 64 so he's had a tremendous start to the year and he was fantastic tonight obviously gave the Blue Jays fits all night long and did well to spell their opportunities off to late innings where they will able to get the ball going and obviously battle home and get it done so I guess what do we do tomorrow against the LA Angels to find a victory in the column for a second day in a row at LA well Jose Barrios is on the mound tomorrow which I know for a lot of Blue Jays fans, that's a scary thought. Way he's been pitching end of last season, early this season. But if he can do what Chris Bassett did and have a bounce back game, even like I said in the pregame, all Chris Bassett needed was five, six innings, three or less runs. If Barrios can do that too, that gives the Blue Jays offense enough confidence to go out and win that game as well. All right, so that will finish up the post game here on Clem Hawks this evening, friends. Just to get to JR's question here live on the live chat still as we're recording this. Uh, spirit animals, I will tell you right now, I am a squirrel if you haven't seen that as of yet in this three and a half hours we've been live. Friends, I'm Yak, he's Gillis TV, signing off from the video and the live stream here tonight. Thanks so much for being along for the ride. We appreciate it so, so much.